What's up, friends? This is Jazz, bringing you another what I got. This is for the month of May. Well, early May, but it's probably not going to be another one till June, right? So, this time I got, let me see, five books, but one book isn't really a book. And I got five games, but four of them are free. So... Let's just get on with the things I have on hand. Now, the books, the four, three of the books didn't come in yet. You'll get unboxings for them as well. As, yes, I know, as we're seeing this, I haven't did the, we need to talk about Kevin unboxing, but that hasn't arrived yet. It's not supposed to get here till a little bit later. So I apologize for that, but let's get on with the things that I actually have. Yes! My aunt got this in a donation bin around the liquor store she was at. You could It's like an IWK or donation thing there. And this is a 20th anniversary of Pojo's unofficial Pokemon. Maybe someday I'll do a video just showing some of the stuff in here. I mean, like, majority of the stuff. But right now, I'll only be able to show you some things there because it's a lengthy, lengthy book, but so far I guess this has been around since 98, this Pojo's unofficial, you know, magazines. So this is kind of a magazine, but this is, this isn't the one that I'm not counting as a book, because this is a book overall type thing, because it has things to read, right? And I just loved that. She saw it, and she's like, oh, I have to get that for, for jazz. So, the next thing is the unofficial book, and it is a word search. It is Pocket Puzzle Word Finds, word, volume 228, I guess. But I've been into word searches a lot lately, especially at, when I am at work. I just find them, like, I, I mean, sometimes I have to look, right? Sometimes I just can't find a word for a while. It depends on how focused I am on it, but really... I can usually find words almost within a minute or less than a minute of me looking for it, right? Almost sight words, right? So I find it something I can, like, if I'm trying to listen to what they're saying, I could still have that as a bit of a distraction if I need a second to process, right? Or, or calm my anxiety. This actually helps. And funnily enough, I don't even need my headphones. When, I, when I'm focused enough on that. So it's one of those things that actually helped me. So she figured, well, she would want this for work. When I finish my other one, I'm going to be using it, but I'm just excited to, go, to get into this eventually. Now, let's get to the books. I ordered three books that two have shipped. One is still needs to be shipped. But I'm not as concerned about that as my other one from the last video, honestly, now. I ordered Coraline. Yes, I've heard of the movie, but I heard it's based on a book, so I figured maybe I'd like to read it before I watch the movie, just to see where I fall on it, and I hear it's a really good book. So it's something up my alley. I'm willing to give it a shot. And I believe, I don't know if that was one, one of the ones that shipped, but I don't know. I'm just not going to get into that. But again, I'm looking forward to reading the spooky element of it. Now, the next book is a bit of a surprise for me in a way, because it's not normally always up my alley, but it's something that I was sort of interested in, right? I, like, up my alley and not. Not a normal up my alley book, would I say. But it is Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen. Now, it is up my alley and not, actually, the way I see it about it. It's about, I love literature that has a big focus on kid characters, right? And psychology, in a way. Now, you're like, how does that have to do with psychology? In a way, it doesn't. But the fact that the boy has a kind heart till he's stricken by the shard from that mirror, and he becomes dark that that is kind of like the idea about and the fact that his friend goes on an adventure and goes so far 
to save her friend. Like, that's just, like, I like kind of the adventure aspect of it, too. And I'm looking forward to reading this. Fun fact, Frozen was very loosely based on it. I don't know if the original Frozen was going to be more like it. I think they said similar. There would be more similarities in the original one they planned to do. But they completely changed the plot in the, the Frozen we know now. But I never thought I'd say this. The Snow Queen sounds like something I might enjoy more than Frozen. Because when you think about it, I don't know why, but the fact that Elsa is misunderstood, really, and she's always kind of been the good guy, like, it's, in a way, like, it kind of, it's different to me, like, like, they have a similar premise where Anna goes to save Elsa, to bring her back, right? But to me, it just doesn't feel, like, as heroin, in a way. I don't know why, but to me, it's, the other one is a bit more darker. I think I like dark elements to the stories. So that's just my opinion on that. Now, the final book I got, which is another one. I know that is one of the ones that shipped. It is The Babysitter 3. Yes, I'm reading, will this say, I might put this in another video, but I'm reading the second one. This might be in the next video, whether I finished it or not. And... I'm actually enjoying the series. I'm like, well, you know what? I have to get the third one now, right? Because I originally I got the first one so I could read the second one, you know, without feeling unsatisfied because I wouldn't know what was going on if I didn't read the first one. So I did it to kind of complete it that way. I originally wasn't planning to really complete the series. I just wanted to read the two, the one I had, so I got the first one. Now me enjoying it, I have to get the next one. You know, it's one of those situations where you don't plan on something until you realize, well, I put a fork in my, you know, thought process. But, I mean, in a good way, right? I found another series that I enjoyed that was spooky up my alley. And it's not overwhelmingly difficult. So I thought, you know what? I would shoot, okay, a shoehorn sounds a little bit impulsive, yes. But I don't want to chase myself, but I've saved a little bit of money. So far, $21. Still working on saving those treats, though. But, hey, in the end of the day, I saved $9. Better than I ever have. So, hopefully I could save that $21 right in the end of it. All right. Now that I've talked about the books, I'm going to talk about the games now. I'm going to take a minute to get into the games here. We'll just say the first one that I got, and I'll have to go up and look for it, is the Echoes of the Plum Groves. Now, this is the game that cost me money, right? I just have to, I'm just getting to the page so you can see what it was, but. And it's pretty much like, okay, how do I put it? It's, it has some similarities to Stardew Valley. It is a farming genre type of game. With, but remember I made the joke I'm a dark person in some ways. I like the dark elements of things. Yeah, it has that. You can murder people. Don't worry, I'm not going to become a video game serial killer. Even though I'm dark, I'm... Not that dark. I maybe, if it's someone I hate, I'll try it once to see the mechanics, but I never thought I'd say this, but I don't really have enough time. Okay, yeah, that sounds dark of me saying I just don't have enough time, but guys, really, I'm not that dark in real life, but when you have a game, it's kind of, you know, fantasy in a way, and I know it's fantasy. So I've actually played a couple hours of this. What do I think of it for paying $26? Not the worst thing I ever played. Yes, I know. Maybe I'll make a review someday on it. And I never played it long enough to fully say. But from the time I played for it and from things that I've read. Hmm, how do I put it? Yes, I still prefer Stardew Valley. Yes. Because there's only one thing in this game 
that is improved. That's an improvement over Stardew Valley. And that's that the kids are more memorable. Your generations are more memorable. Hmm. But is it better than Kinseed? I never played again long enough. But so far, a little bit and not again. It's it's kind of hard to explain. Like, there is more to do in some ways than in Kinsey, it feels, right? But in one way, the biggest flaw it has is the characters, besides your child. And even then, I haven't had a child yet. But from what I've seen, like, every other villager is hit or miss because you talk to them and yes they might say some things right but they're not as memorable this to me is so far and one positive is that it's easier to friend them i get befriend them by just talking to them i guess but the thing is they die yes they die naturally and that's how the generation thing happens right okay one thing that i am going to say that I find hilarious, and I watched it in a 100 days challenge, I think, and, or 100 days, or playing a year, right, and the guy, you have to get, once you get him to a certain amount of friendship, you have to give them, like, a book, a marriage bouquet, then you gotta go on it, like, once you fulfill their requirements, which is maybe befriending someone else, you go and you choose the date, right, and then there, you pop the question, but what I found was hilarious is that the candidate in that video was like, okay, we'll get married tomorrow. And he's like, and I'm like that too. I'm like, wait, what? And what's even funnier is as soon as you get married, at least for him, the next day, let's have a baby. I'm like, okay, please tell me the baby's not going to pop out the next day. And to give him credit, it didn't. It just took two more. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just kind of ridiculous how fast it goes but you know what they say they they die and they age quicker so yeah that's probably the reason for that but still there's just some things there that are a little bit huh excuse me but it, it's kind of funny in a way it's it's not all bad in a bad bad way it's kind of what's to say okay it's not a so bad it's good game guys don't get me wrong it has a lot of very positive reviews and i can see why in a lot of ways but just some things are so bad it's type of thing so anyway that was the only game that i bought right and i was thinking of buying it with my money so the next game okay geez that's not the next okay yes the next game i got is virtual cottage now this is kind of more how do i put it a management type of game it's not exactly a game but it is like according to that it is and you pretty much can make tasks and try to make it more fun or enjoyable or whatever and it was free i'm like you know what you never know maybe that will help me a little bit <laughs> but it, it, it's known as a cozy casual and relaxing well obviously for free it's not bad like i mean i guess you could get buy duis bundle whatever and there's dlc and stuff but not anything that i'm interested in so it, it's an interesting thing to try for free the next game i got is air one for free now guys this is a virtual a visual novel and dating sim game which again is kind of up my alley and it's a little bit dark in a way. And the fact that it's free, I mean of course there's DLC I would imagine, but still, if it's something that I like then I would, I would get it, but it's still fun to just play it. You know, just something interesting for me to try and here's Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna stop looking at this game. Although I know I wouldn't play it, but there's some things there that's not so friendly. Alright. 
the next game I got is Chill Corner. This is again another relaxing and it's free to play. So it's kind of more, you know, it's supposed to just, it's kind of like a app in a way too. Like it's kind of helps you chilling and relaxing and focusing. So again, something that I can try. You can make your own character and your pet and that, that sounds really cool too. And you have like different things there like and it's pretty and it says it's pretty positive I mean there is a bundle in the supporter pack but something I book wouldn't just buy you know I mean I enjoy it's something to enjoy just trying for free and if I actually enjoy it then maybe I would add to it well, right now, it, it's something fun to get, right? Something different to get to relax and to get. Now, the final date game is A Date with Death. It's another dating simulator. Yeah, yeah, we have a theme there. Two relaxing games and two games that are a little dark and morbid, right? But, hey. What is jazz without being a little random, right? And I was just looking for some games to add to it, right? Just to that I thought I would like it. And I always look for free games, guys. I don't just buy games to buy them. But if I think I like them and I can add to them, I do. And I don't buy games all the time. Maybe once a month, you know, once a month to add to the halls. Here's the So yeah guys that was my haul. I as I said most of the games were free but I bought a lot to make up for it so trust me I spent a lot of money. So anyway guys if you enjoyed this haul give it a big thumbs up and if you're new to this channel like what you see please subscribe and help this channel a lot. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll know when new videos are coming out. And I'll see you guys in my next video.